Right, we're doing a bit of old school defender stuff. There we go, there's our old school defender. We've dug him out the back of beyond. Look, we have got a real old defender as well. Right, someone, we sell this rear side step. We've sold loads of these without problems. Brit Park product, as you can see. But someone's bought one and said, oh, it's, I don't know, maybe it's, it's not so good. So we're gonna have a look, and I bought a genuine one, and we'll put the, I've got no problem selling genuine stuff. Some people, especially with their defenders now, where they're going up in value, they're going, no, it's all right, I'll spend a few extra pounds and have the genuine one. But let's have a compare. I'll have an unbiased compare. I've got them here, we'll throw them out on the table, have a look at the fit into the instructions and see which one's sort of value for money. So I have sort of had these out of the box. I've had a bit of a look. Right, so this is the Brit part one. We've got that, we've got a little bag of instructions. It was sealed, I've opened the bag because I've been playing with it. Right, and we've got two, two bolts, two rib nuts. And we'll talk about the rib nuts because we'll have a go at fitting this as well, actually. We're gonna have a go at fitting it. Right, so we've got two bolts, two rib nuts, and two spring washers, right? So, not a, and we've got some, some instructions, one sheet, double-sided instructions. Oh, looks good, right, boom. Right, and then this is the genuine one. So this step will fit the 110 and the 90. <coughs> it's the rear step. They do a side step that's slightly different. Right, so we've got some fittings here. We've got some slightly stiffer paper instructions. And we'll have a look and we'll compare those. And we've got this. Right, so let's have a look. So first thing on, I actually think the rubber step on the Brit part one looks better. It's got a slightly shinier, now this is gonna be a bit weird, but it doesn't smell like a sort of cheaper rubber. It smells more like a sort of polyurethane. It's riveted on underneath. It's got a structure, it's quite a heavy product. Let's have a quick look. And this step sits quite nicely. This is the Land Rover one. It, it seems like it's a bit too big. It sort of rides up on this corner here. Um, see that there. It also makes a funny noise when you got something loose in there. It's got something it? loose. It's like some bit of rivet um, weld. It feels mm. like a bit of, um, and and you can see the the sort of rubber started to go a bit sort of white. Yeah. It looks uh, like it's been left out in the sun, doesn't it? It does look a bit of something. Yeah, and it stinks a bit. Go on, have a sniff of that, Gary. Go on. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Um, smells. Riveted on the same so side by side. They look much the same. Um, if I, there's some interesting things, the spring's at a different position, I'll change that in a minute. But it looks like, you see where they've got this here, it, this stops here where this brick part one goes a bit further. I guess it just maybe sticks out a fraction more. I don't know, it's interesting. Uh, or is it because I'm comparing one side to the other? No, it's not. So these bits go up around the corner where these bits sort of stop quite quickly. Um, one thing I did notice, and we'll have a look at this when we come to fit it, is the Brit part one, you can't slide this fit in along. It's got a little thing there to stop it. And this this, this one here, look, the genuine one, and this is dead clever. Um, I don't know why Brit part, because that cost them money to put that in. But if you think about it, when you mount this, and we'll go and have a look at it, this one fixes its position. It can't move, it can't move this way on the chassis. And this one, you can actually, you can move it a bit, because on this one, you'll see the tow bar's really close. So if your tow bar mountings are here, you can just move this and put another hole somewhere else. So I think Brit part have missed a bit of a trick. I think they've added in an extra bit that they didn't need to. Um, I should let that one go with the flow, just glide, just float. See, right, um, right, so what you've got, you've got the step, and then this, it won't take your finger off, it sounds fierce. But they've got a spring, this one seems much the same. The spring force seems much the same. The other thing, that I didn't like the genuine one. Look, it's got like this extra bit of thread coming out. Okay, no one will ever see it. But the Brit Pot one's nicely finished and they're both yeah. using nylock nuts. But it just looks a bit neater to me. It just doesn't work, I don't get one. Again, it costs more money. Well, buy a shorter bolt, they're cheaper. So I don't know. Right, um, so I would say, because uh, the, the guy that's bought the Brit part one off me, he's saying it, it was fouling on this. Now, it may be the way it's bolted, it was getting a bit close to, to here, because look, it can get close to there. So it, it, that could be an issue. And he said the paint was chipped. Um, but there, there's a little bit of rust coming through there, look. 
Um, but generally the paint's not too bad. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at this one. Um, it seems much the sort of same. I'm trying to see if there's any bits of. Look, there's a little bit of there. Look, there's a little bit of rust on the top here. I don't know if your camera will focus on that. This is new out the packet. So, I, to be fair, I'd say they're fairly without doing a full-on salt spray mm. test. Um, to me, they're fairly compatible. But I think the biggest drawback with the the brick part one is the fact that this doesn't move along. Right, fitting kits, let's have a look. It's all looking much the same. What have we got? In there somewhere. So we've got the same now. We'll have a look again, but we've got the same bolts. And, uh, let's have a look there. In fact, the brick part ones are giving you longer bolts, which we'll see are actually handy. So I think the brick part bolts are better. I think they're longer. Um, I can see by looking at them, none of the fittings are stainless steel. Stainless steel would have been nice. Um, the rib nuts look much the same. The spring washers look much the same. So um, I would argue that the brick part kit is is comparable. The instructions, I think someone's done a bit of a naught here. I think I think brick part have been some been a bit any of those pictures look familiar, Gary. <laughs> mm. Yeah, just a little mm, bit. Just a little bit. But brick cart there's they're smart, look, they've done it all on one piece of paper, you see? But yeah, this looks like a faded out photocopy. But I'm not don't sue me brick part. I'm not casting any. I'm just just draw your own conclusions. Right. Um right, so there we go. But one side of it we like that, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, versus two, but they've obviously done a lot of branding on there. Um, right, we will have a go at fitting one now. Oh, let's go and have a look at this genuine one. No, sorry, this is the, I'm going to get them right, the Brit part one. Yep. And let's have a look what this whole sliding or not sliding thing's all about. So, right, we've got, a, we've got our rear bumper on here. But well, let's have a look. So basically, I don't know how we're going to get under here, Gary, but we'll have a go. What we need is one of them defenders with air suspension, Gary. We like that, don't we? Whenever we're doing any work on the car, we're like, you've got it up at the moment, <laughs> haven't we? We're like, oh, I'll put the suspension up. Right then. Anyway, such. Right, so if I just spring that out without taking my finger off, he says. Right. And then, what? So what this, this is in. So you, this sits against the flat, and then you've got this little stump. Now, I think what you're supposed to have. Now we've got a galvanised chassis. How's the light doing, Gary? Are we getting some focus on there? Yeah, you're right. You see, we've got this what looks like a little square bit here, and that's threaded inside. So I think what's supposed to happen is this is supposed to sit up. And that's supposed to bolt in, and where that little tab at the back there is a bit longer, it meets up to the chassis, and it's sort of supposed to stop it tipping, tipping back. So I can understand that. But then the other fitting. It's too near. Yeah, it's, it's not a very good video, this one, but right. And you'll see it's right on that bolt there, and I've got yeah. the I've got the tow bar bracket there. So with the Land Rover one, I can actually move it in and drill myself another hole and fit one of those rift nuts that they've kindly provided me. So I think I'm going to fit the Brit part one, fit the genuine one, only because this one I'm scuppered. I'd like to drill another hole here. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a little spacer plate. The same, because because obviously I've got to account for this this change in level, because this level is higher than that level. So I'm gonna have to put some washers or a little spacer in there, aren't I, Gary? And then we can, and that'll all sit level. So I am gonna go with the other genuine one for that reason. Right, Gary's asked a good question. Said, well, we're lucky we've got both to choose from. What if you'd have bought this Brit part one and you'd gone to fit it in your tow bars in the way? Well, I think with not too much effort, you could grind out the weld here on this washer. I will feed it back to Britpart and offer them a cost saving. Do you reckon they'll give me a, a penny for every one with the saved weld and the saved washer? Okay. I doubt it. Um, I don't think I'm going to retire on it anyway. Right. Um, so that's what you could do. If you're up, if you're watching this video and you're like, ah, oh, poop, then uh, that will be your get out of jail free card there. Like if you did that, then you could then <laughs> slide that along. Right. What we've got to do, we've got to get, where's our orange pen? Let's mark out some holes and drill the chassis. So we've got the hole marked, we're about to drill the hole. Now, 
what you'll notice is these rib nuts have got this hexagonal body whereas the ones we've always used before have a round body like that unless it's on the evoke and what they've done on the evoke when you fit the steps when they made the evoke steel under panels they must have cut it with a laser and they cut a hexagonal hole so you can insert and rib nuts work really well that way because you can put them into the hexagonal hole you tighten them up and they squash because the rib nut can't turn because it's a hex hexagonal rib nut in a hexagonal hole and you can just tighten them and they just squash and form the captive nut you need but our problem is with our skill, we cannot drill a hexagonal hole into the bottom of our Land Rover chassis there. We can only drill round holes. So I, I went and raided my Rivnut pot, but the biggest we've got is M8. And the bolts we've got and the holes we've got here are M10. Um, so I haven't got any Rivnuts big enough. And even if I did have an M10 Rivnut, you can't find many m10 rib nut tools because of the size of them the amount of pressure you need to squash them is really high so i think we're gonna have to try and go originally ridiculing these we're gonna have to drill a hole that's not quite big enough and we're gonna have to see if we can ram it in there i mean obviously the instructions don't, don't tell us any of this nonsense i mean let's let's check the instructions look put the step Spot where the two holes go, bosh them in at 25 Newton meters, flip it up. Job done. Lovely. Mm, I wish. Right. Um, so let's have a go. So I'm going to let Gary, I've got to have a, a meeting. So I'm going to leave Gary to, he's going to centre punch in the middle of that hole. And then he's going to drill a hole and maybe find the drill you've got closest to the diameter of that. Let us know what it is. Mm. And we'll have a go at tapping that in. And then if that doesn't go in, we, we could either file, file it into a hexagon or drill a slightly bigger hole. Right, the adventure starts. Right, so Gary's drilled a nice hole here. 13 millimeter hole. That went through right, didn't it? Gary, you said it wasn't too bad. No, it was, it was fine. Right, what we've got to do now is we've got to try and... So the rib, net, the rib net you'll see goes in at least to here. And then we're going to have to hammer it in and see if we can get it in tight. But I'm not sure it'll work or not. But you don't want to hammer onto the face of the rib nut. If you just hammer onto the face of the rib nut here and it's tight there, what you in danger of doing is causing this bit here to ripple and squidge, which it will never get in the hole. So if you put a bolt in, make sure the bolt comes all the way to the end. And then what you're doing is you're trying to pull it from almost inside the hole up in and it will stop this bit squashing. Let's have a go, shall we? Right then. <laughs> Right then, so yeah, that's, we'll just hold that there, you can't see a lot, it's all black, but that, that's gone up into the start, and then, I don't think this is going to go, Gary, right, so. right, that's a no, that's, that's just catching on that edge, look, it's not, you can see where it's sticking, so we've either got, a, see this is where we get to the hexagonal hole issue, so we could either, I don't know what to do now, whether to go up one more and risk it just catching on the tips. I think we're going to have to. If we got a, what, we 13? Try to go 14, it's probably going to spin, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. Um, what to do, what to do. Because we got no, and filing is just going to be a pain, isn't it? Um, to, oh, but it's not even getting past the edge there is it no um because we could file down these edges a little bit uh, let's do that let's do that we'll file we'll file some of these these down a little bit so it's it's not quite as fierce well we'll do that next right so we've got there's the original plate that with the tapped hole i did have to clean that out with a, a tap actually we've got a galvanized chassis on here and i think that when it's galvanized it could have clogged the thread a bit um Right, so there's the other one. Gary's fitted that in, and he's got that so it pushes up. So hopefully it won't turn. And again, he, he knocked it in. He says it's quite tight. It looks all right, actually. He's gone home. I'm working on. Right then. So that's all good. So I'm now ready to, to offer it up. Now, the genuine bolts that came with this kit. So this is the genuine one we decided to fit because of this floating arm here, which suits us better because it's near there. Um, but the bolts they give you are pretty short and even if you compare them to the rivnut they're just a bit 
longer. So I've gone for fitting these longer bolts. So they're M10. I've managed to find some longer M10. And I've got the spacers, a couple of spacers, washers here. That I think I'm going to need to get them up to the same level. All right, if I just give you the camera. Um, and we've got the spring washers as well. So let me get those ready. All right, here we go. I've got the spring washers on my longer M10 bolts. All right, let me see if I can... I've got my 17 millimeter socket ready. Right. And it should, in theory, just be a question of getting these in. Right. Right, so this one actually, the threaded hole in the chassis is an M8. So I don't know. So I've had to put an M8 bolt in there. So you're really going to have to look. And obviously, that's the fun with defenders. You're never sure what size anything is on your car. Right, so we got that one. That's gonna be the easy one. This one here, now, actually I've forgotten to put a spacer. I'll put a spacer in there. No, I need to put a spacer nut in there. You just put the spacers, because otherwise it's not gonna sit level because of the thickness of this one. The step will be wonky. Will I be sliding off all over the place? So I think two of those washers there. When you, we've also got the thickness of the flange on the Good nut, but I think that'll all. That'll have it all. Right. Right. Now the trick is going to be this rib nut is obviously it can still drop out here. I'm going to tighten it while keeping it pressed up, and the step's going to get in the way with an extension. Right. Here you go. Let's see if the now if the rib nut spins, this is not going to work. But let's see how Gary's done. It's feeling, it's feeling tight. Right, I'll leave that one for a minute. Let me get that one tight because then at least the steps not. <laughs> Right, so I think more by luck than judgment, we've just about caught that. So it is a tricky thing. Um, the hexagonal hole thing, um, the drilling, it is a bit tricky, but that's how Land Rover supply it. Um, the genuine one is better because you can move that bracket along. Um, but there you go, when you've got it finished, then you've got a step there that you can obviously put down and then you can fold it back up again. We've obviously got a rear bar on here, but it's, I guess the idea of it is so that if you're off-roading it tucks up out the way and doesn't diminish your departure angle so there you go there's a little review and a little sort of guide um it's a tricky one it's not a straight i mean it'd be interesting let me know in the comments if you buy a later defender did they have hexagonal holes cut out ready for you in the rear cross member for that um I, yeah i don't get the hexagonal rib nut thing but there you go good luck with that